Hey everyone, and welcome to Permit. You probably clicked on this video because you want to learn more about Reback and more specifically, how to configure a Reback policy inside of the Permit UI. Well, you came to the right place and if you weren't familiar with, Reback is one of the far more granular and more difficult permission models that you can actually apply to control access in your applications. Now, Reback stands for Relationship-Based Access Control and in this video, we're going to walk through a very simple demo of how you can configure a Reback policy in the Permit No-Code Policy Editor and we're going to base it on an example where we're going to model a Google Drive a permission system where a user might have access to a whole folder and therefore because there are children files inside that folder, uh, perhaps uh, things like documents, he will automatically derive that access to those uh, files within that folder. And that's what we're going to create today. Now, first of all, we have to just start off with creating some resources within Permit. So let's do that. Now, in our case, we need to create two resources and we can do that under policies, resources, and then create a resource and we'll create two. We'll create a folder resource and a file resource. So let's do that. Then we have a folder resource and we have a bunch of actions that we can specify here. I'm just going to leave them as they are and I'm going to save this and then I'm going to create another resource and I'm going to call this a file resource. And in this case, I'll add another custom action called modify. And as so, we can just save those changes. And what you'll see is that we have two resources populated here with all the specific actions that we defined. Now, the next step in creating this Reback policy is to define the relationships between the resources. And the relationships between the resources signify how those resources are connected to one another. Now, in this case, we need to add a relationship for the folder resource. So we can just go ahead here and click on edit resource. And at the very bottom here, you'll see these relations and we can add a new relation. And we can now say that the folder is the parent of, and in this case, I'm going to pick the resource of a file and save those changes. And as soon as I do that, you'll see that we have this relation here that comes up under both of these resources. And that relation is just saying that this folder is the parent of a file and the same goes for both of these resources. Now that we have defined the different relationships between our resources, it's time to start associating different roles to those individual resources to then determine what a specific user can perform on that specific resource. And those roles are not just there to identify the user based on their identity, but also the access that they have to that specific resource. So in this case, I can add roles to this folder resource. And I'm going to say that I want my um, folder resource to have roles such as an admin and we can press enter on the folder resource but also an editor on the folder resource and just by pressing enter we can see that this uh, roles are assigned to those specific resources and we can save those changes and in that same way i'm going to add a role to the file and it's just going to be an editor role on the file resource and i'm going just to save those changes and as I do, you can see that we have these roles pop up here that show us what type of roles we have on that specific resource. Now, an important thing to note here is that as soon as you create your roles on your resources, what will happen is that the policy editor will automatically generate those resource roles for you. So when you actually want to then continue to add specific permissions to those resource roles, you can do so immediately. Now we are at a very exciting stage because we can almost see our policy come to life. We defined our resources, we defined our relationships, and we defined our resource roles. And now what we need to do is create a role derivation. Now role derivation allows us to automatically assign or inherit roles based on certain conditions or relationships. So as you saw, whenever we created these roles on specific resources, we actually auto-populated them in the policy editor. Now, this is, might be a good time to point out that this is not the only policy editor view that we also provide you. You can also change to the grid view right in the top right corner. And what you'll be able to see is all your roles and all your resource roles at the very top of that grid. And on the side, you'll be able to see all your resources with all the actions defined. Now, let's say we want to create role derivation for the editor role on the folder resource. It's just as simple as clicking this and editing this role. And as we scroll down, you'll be able to see that under the Reback options, we can add a derivation. Now, this derivation essentially will 
say and state that anyone who has the editor role on the folder resource will derive access to an editor role on the file resource when, and here is where we specify the condition, a folder is the parent of a file. And as you create this derivation, you'll see a very human readable like example where a user who is an editor on a folder will also be an editor on a file when a folder instance is the parent of a file instance. And as soon as you're happy with those changes, you can go ahead and save this role derivation. Now, as soon as you save this role derivation, you'll see that we get a little icon populated by this resource role, and it will just show you this whole definition as a shorthand that an editor role in a folder resource derives access to an editor role on a file resource when the uh, folder is the parent of a file. And that is it. Our reback policy is now configured. All you need to do is just create a permit.check inside your application level code to check for the unique user identity that has logged into your system, the action they want to perform on the resource group, and then of course, in return, you'll receive back a response whether the user is allowed or not allowed to do so. Now, if you want further information on Reback, make sure you follow the links in the description to our documentation. And also, if you need any help and support, make sure you join our community. I'll also leave the link in the description below. But for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.